So I've been going through a series on how to utilize boundaries. And this time I'm going to address how to deal with people who don't get or respect your boundaries. This is for situations in which you've tried to respectfully express your boundaries to someone and they disregarded your wishes, attacked you back. Or maybe they pretended that they understood and they'd comply, but they've continued to treat you the same way they always have. Now keep in mind, I'm going forward with the assumption that you've represented your boundaries to this person a few times without any positive progress or much. First off, let's clarify what kind of role this person plays in your life. If this is a work situation, then treating someone respectfully may not be the order of business. The working world is too often simply doggy dog and every man for himself. You may not be able to appeal to a person to be respectful under those conditions if there's nothing more to the relationship or the connection that you have with them that you worked in the same office. If you've spoken to them, then I suppose your next step would be to bring the issue to a supervisor. And if you don't have to work in close proximity to them, then it may be best to be around them less often. If this person's a family member or a close friend or someone you want to continue to be in relationship with, then my first thought would be to go to this person at a neutral time, meaning not when you're arguing, and tell them you want to talk with them about something important. Explain how you've been experiencing them and ask them if that is the result that they've been aiming for to cause you to feel the way you do. If they care about you, they'll probably make excuses first, but if you hold them to the question, they hopefully can say that they've not been intending you to feel that way. Now, if they blame you in some way for your feelings, well, I would suggest that you could let them know that in that moment that, that they are doing what you're coming to them to address and explain then that your feelings are yours and aren't open for them to decide for you, but bring them back to the issue where it belongs and ask them again if they are pleased with the results of you feeling what you feel based on how they communicate with you. The goal is for them to acknowledge that this is not their intention. Well, then, if this is not their intention, then at that time, you can invite them with you to consider how they could do it differently. For example, if you would prefer not to hurt me or belittle me, how do you think we could change our interactions? Or does this mean that you're willing to consider that you have been disrespectful towards me? And if so, to offer an apology and attempt to be more considerate in the future. If at some point the offender gets resistant or hardened and turns back to defensiveness, you could suggest that you take a time out and come back to it later. Or maybe if you're sensitive to their struggle, you could invite them to share about what they are feeling. But if the offender is unyielding, if they don't soften but they stay defensive or try to turn it back on you, claiming that you're too sensitive or some, some such, then you could let them know that from this point you will need to choose to remove yourself from their hurtful disrespect and that you will put more distance between the two of you. You often need to explain to them that the purpose of your distance is not about punishing them but simply to protect yourself from further mistreatment. You see the final boundary is distance. I'll, I'll come back to this a bit later. Okay, how about the person uh, that you're dealing with who won't let uh, the conversation go and continue to harass or cajole or debate or follow you? If you stated your preference to end the discussion and they won't let it go, here's two approaches you could try. The one is to throw them a challenge by saying, wow, you really can't stop, can you? Sort of daring them like a little kid to prove that they can do it. This will be effective with some, but, but, but only be more provoking to others like the more aggressive types. Okay, the second way is to directly tell them that what they're doing is abusive. Now, I need to caution you here that, that these approaches are not for someone who's ever been physically abusive. And if you suspect or fear that this person could become violent or has shown violent tendencies, then I would refer you to resources on how to deal with abusers or domestic violence and, and seriously caution you to not engage with them on your own. Okay, now let's consider the type who responds passively with some kind of agreement, but it turns out that they're likely being insincere. This one's more tricky, particularly if you're committed to maintaining a relationship with them. I would suggest that, you, that, that when they repeat a violation of your boundaries, that you ask them to tell you what they were thinking and meaning when they said or did what they said or did. Either they will reveal in their description that they were not considering your boundaries, in which you can bring this to their attention, or they'll reveal some misunderstanding in, in their thinking, which you can then address. The real test will be if they repeat a very similar interaction with you after you've had this insightful discussion. 
I think it's fair to assume that if they demonstrate that they cannot understand what respectfulness looks like and they continue to repeat it, that even if their words say they want to, that you'll need to rely on the fruit. They're choosing not to grow in this area. Now earlier, I mentioned that the final boundary is distance. This means that if you've expressed yourself to this person, you've tried to help them understand and you feel you've made honest attempts to be patient, then I believe you've done your duty in regards to the law of love. You could certainly utilize the biblical approach of bringing along another to confront them of their sin. But ultimately there comes a point at which the scripture recommends we separate or create distance from someone. I would refer you to some scriptures like Matthew 18, 17, 2 Thessalonians 3.14 and Titus 3.9, which says to avoid foolish controversies and dissensions. And certainly the book of Proverbs tells us that the character of a fool is one who ignores correction and so would fit this kind of person. Proverbs 14.7 says, leave the presence of a fool, for there you will not meet words of knowledge. The reality is that sometimes the imposition of distance, of removing yourself from them, is the very boundary that was needed for them to wake up and choose to change. But the purpose of the boundary isn't, uh, the purpose of using the boundary of distance is not to require someone else to change, it's about removing oneself from mistreatment. The goal is always about how I cultivate a healthy balance between respecting myself and respecting others because that's what boundaries is about. So this concludes my series on utilizing boundaries. If you have further questions or would like to schedule an appointment with me, please contact me by email or call our office 407-647-7005.